Hi, I'm John Johnson. and I'm going to demonstrate proper tire changing procedures, including the use of jacks, tools, safe vehicle placement, tire identification, and ways to make the task easier and avoid the pitfalls that can spell disaster. The production of this video is intended to provide visual references to written instructions found in the department's manual of operations, vehicle's owner manuals, and factory decals placed on most vehicles. Now, this video is not intended to supersede or replace vehicle factory instructions. If there's any doubt, contact the appropriate vehicle dealership or your area mechanic or the fire shops. Because the fire department is so large and our equipment is so diverse, we carry over 30 different types of tires. If you need to order a tire, you have to know the exact tire size, the style of rim, and the type of vehicle that goes on. Here is an example of the series of numbers and letters that identify the size and type of this tire. The first set of numbers describes the tire height. The second set of numbers describes the width of the tire. The letter R means it's a radial ply bolted tire and the third number is the size of the rim. You may see a letter in front like P for passenger tire or LT for light truck. Here's some helpful information that I want to tell you about. The difference between a recap and a brand new tire. Now the recap, if you look, might have this slightly rounded edge at the tread. Along here you can see where they've cut the old worn tread off and placed this new cap under a special process. Never put a recap on a front or steering axle. This is one reason why knowing the rim style is critical. These two rims may look similar, but they cannot be interchanged. The one on the left is a hub piloted rim. The holes for the studs are smaller in comparison to the other rim. Notice the lug nut has a washer attached to it. The rim on the right is stud piloted. The holes for the studs are larger and are chamfered or cut in at an angle. Notice the lug nut is bevel cut to fit into the rim. Here you see the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure for the maximum load capacity of this tire. Most of our firefighting vehicles are near their weight limit with tools, equipment and personnel. Therefore, the tires are to be filled to the pressure listed on the tire. Tires will lose pressure over time. In fact, tire manufacturers can allow up to a 5% loss in pressure per month and it will still be considered a good tire. For example, a tire with 40 psi at 5% loss is 2 pounds per month. Not much, but unchecked over 6 months will result in a loss of 12 pounds. This is why it is important to check your tire pressure with a gauge on a regular basis. A low tire creates more heat, causing premature wear and a breakdown in the tire integrity, not to mention the loss in driving stability. As little as 10 pounds less in one tire can cause your vehicle to drift to one side while driving. Here's a little bit of information. If you see an indentation running across the sidewall like this, that's normal. But if you see a bulge or something where it sticks out, that's not good. You should have this tire checked. Something as simple as turning into a driveway too soon and striking the sidewall will affect the integrity of your tire. When selecting one tire to be replaced, Choose the tread pattern that closely matches the tire on the opposite side. This combination is incorrect. This combination is correct. These two tires are the same size. One is worn down to within its limits, the other is new. When replacing a tire on a dual wheel application, tire height is critical. The two tires must be as close to the same height as possible. For example, you would not want to put these two tires together. If load equalization is not met, the taller tire will be bearing more than its weight designed capacity. This could have catastrophic results. The 
Department of Transportation tread limit specifications for replacing a worn tire on a commercial or heavy vehicle is 4 seconds of an inch for the front or steering tires and 2 seconds of an inch for the drive or rear tires. The LA County expectations for safety are to replace the tire before it reaches that limit. There is a built-in limit check in most tires. It is between the treads. If anywhere you see the limit bar flush with adjoining treads, that tire must not be driven on. Replace it as soon as possible. Another way to check tread depth for the drive tire is to place a penny head down into the most worn part of the tire's tread. From the edge of the penny to the top of Lincoln's head is 2 seconds of an inch. Notice, you can't see the top of Lincoln's head. This tire was taken out of service at the right time before it reached the wear limits. To check front or steering tires, use the back of the penny. The distance from the edge of the penny to the top of the word UNUM is 4 seconds of an inch. If this were a steering tire, it would be well beyond the safe limits. Now I'm going to explain some of the tools that you'll be seeing throughout the video. This is called a scissor jack. It has a threaded rod that runs to the each end. When it's turned clockwise, it draws the ends in and raises the top. Counterclockwise will lower it. You'll find these on most small cars. The next tool I want to show you is the hydraulic bottle jack. The principle behind this jack is liquids cannot be compressed. Close this valve. There is a reservoir inside here that when you use this pump to pump it up, it fills up this cylinder. The cylinder raises. Also on the top, if you need a little bit more space, you can extract this screwed in head. Then when you want to lower it, open the valve slowly and it will roll down. I know most of you know this jack. It's a floor jack. It works in the same principle as the bottle jack we just saw, except it lays in here sideways. One thing I want to mention about all these jacks is they have weight limits. Before you put any of these jacks under a vehicle, you need to know the weight of the vehicle and the load capacity of the jack you intend to use. Now this floor jack here has a capacity of three and a half tons. You can use this to raise one wheel of an F-350 squad or an F-450 patrol, but you can't lift any part of a truck or a pumper because just one side of an axle is over 9,000 pounds. So know the weight of your vehicle and check the weight capacity of your jack. Make sure it's rated for more than what you're lifting. Let's go into the torque multiplier. Here's a quick demonstration of how this tool operates. There are gears in the head of the multiplier that change the number of turns the socket would make compared with the ratchet. For example, a 4 to 1 ratio would mean 4 turns of the ratchet equals one turn of the socket. Thereby, the force applied to the ratchet will be four times greater at the socket. Another result of this gearing is the opposite action of the ratchet handle to the multiplier handle. Okay, let's go to the torque wrench. That accompanies the torque multiplier. Now, we need to achieve 450 to 500 pound, foot-pounds of torque. So to achieve this, we need to go to the graph on here that says 120 foot-pounds. Crank the handle over until we get to that point. Now, 120 on the torque wrench is because we have a 4 to 1 ratio, so that gives us 480 foot-pounds of torque. Remember, keep your tools clean and in good working order. Next, I'm going to show you how to change tires on four different vehicles. See you there. Once you realize you have a flat or low tire, pull safely to the right of the roadway, out of traffic. If possible, pull off the road completely and find a flat level ground. Place the transmission in park and turn off the ignition. Set the parking brake. The spare tire and tools are located in the trunk of the vehicle. Manufacturer's tire changing instructions should be in the trunk. If not, refer to the vehicle's owner manual in the glove box. 
Remove nut. Remove retaining washer. Unhook and remove fastening bolt. Slide the spare tire out of the trunk and place it safely on the ground. Locate and retrieve tire changing tools. Refer to instructions for proper jack placement. If your wheel has a cover, remove the cap with the end of the lug wrench. Fasteners secure some covers. Remove them to access wheel lug nuts. Prior to raising the vehicle, loosen each lug nut approximately one turn counterclockwise using the lug wrench. Place jack under the vehicle as per the manufacturer's specifications. Raise the vehicle with the jack until the tire is approximately two inches off the ground. Finish removing the lug nuts. Make sure to place them all together for easy retrieval. Remove tire and place it safely on the ground. Visually inspect wheel well area for signs of damage and leaking fluids. Never put any part of your body under the vehicle while it's raised on the jack. Never drive a damaged vehicle. Retrieve the spare tire. Walk the tire into place. Use the lug wrench to lift the tire onto the studs. Reinstall lug nuts and hand tighten evenly. Lower the vehicle and remove the jack. With the vehicle on the ground, finish tightening lug nuts in a crisscross pattern. Remember to retighten lug nuts to factory specifications within 100 miles. Once you realize you have a flat or low tire, Pull safely to the right of the roadway out of traffic. If possible, pull off the road completely and find a flat level ground. Place the automatic transmission into park. If your vehicle has a manual transmission, shift it into reverse. Set the parking brake. Turn off the ignition. Most light duty trucks have the tools under the hood. Check the owner's manual as some vehicles may differ. Use caution when removing tools from the engine compartment. Tools may be hot. Locate and retrieve the hydraulic jack provided for your vehicle. Place chalk block under the wheel on the opposite side of the vehicle on an axle that does not have a flat tire. After placing chalk block on the downhill side of the tire, allow the vehicle to gently roll against the chalk. Remember to reset the parking brake and transmission. Prior to raising the vehicle, loosen each lug nut approximately one turn counterclockwise using the lug wrench. Refer to the vehicle owner's manual for proper jack placement. To save time and effort, raise the jack close to the height needed before placing under the vehicle. 
Raise vehicle until the tires are approximately two inches off the ground. Your vehicle may have wheel covers that require special tools to remove. These tools must stay with the vehicle. Finish removing lug nuts. Make sure to place them all together for easy retrieval. Remove tires and lay them safely on the ground. Do not lean tires against the vehicle. If the wheel feels stuck, pull on one side, then the other in an alternating fashion. Visually inspect wheel well area for signs of damage and leaking fluids. Never get under a raised vehicle when the tires are off. Never drive a damaged vehicle. On a dual wheel axle, place the newer tire on the inside. The concave side of the rim should face inward. Then mount the outside wheel with the concave side facing outward. Use the lug wrench for leverage to help you lift the tire onto the studs. Make sure to align the handholds of the rims with each other. The valve stems should be on opposite sides. Reinstall lug nuts and hand tighten evenly. Lower the vehicle and remove jack. With the vehicle on the ground, finish tightening lug nuts in a crisscross pattern. Remember to retighten lug nuts to factory specifications within 100 miles. Once you realize you have a flat or low tire, pull safely to the right of the roadway out of traffic. If possible, pull off the road completely and find a flat level ground. Set the parking brake, place the manual transmission into reverse, turn off ignition. Place the chalk block under the wheel on the opposite side of the vehicle on an axle that does not have a flat tire. After placing a chalk block on the downhill side of the tire, allow the vehicle to gently roll against the chalk. Remember to reset the parking brake and transmission. Locate and retrieve the appropriate tire changing tools and hydraulic jack. Some medium trucks carry their own spare tire. If your vehicle is not equipped with a spare tire, contact dispatch or your supervisor. Prior to raising the vehicle, use the socket end of the lug wrench to loosen the outer lug nuts approximately one turn. On a double nut wheel securing system, passenger side loosens counterclockwise, driver side loosens clockwise. To save time and effort, raise the jack close to the height needed before placing under the vehicle. Consult the vehicle's operating instructions for specific jack placement. If no instructions are found, place the jack below a smooth, flat surface under the axle, nearest the damaged tire. Raise vehicle until the tires are approximately two inches off the ground. Finish removing outer lug nuts Make sure to place them all together for easy retrieval. Remove outer tire and lay safely on the ground. Do not lean the tire against the vehicle. Next, remove the inner nut with the square drive end of the lug wrench. Loosen in the same direction as the outer nut. Use a tool to lift the inner wheel over the axle flange. Walk the tire back away from the vehicle and lay safely on the ground.
Visually inspect wheel well area for signs of damage and leaking fluids. Never get under a raised vehicle when the tires are off. Never drive a damaged vehicle. When replacing tires, put the newer tire on the inside. Walk the tire to the point where it can be tilted up and flush with the axle flange. Use a tool to help lift the tire onto the studs. The concave side of the rim should face inward. The rim must be centered on the studs before tightening inner lug nuts. After hand tightening all the inner lug nuts evenly, finish tightening with the lug wrench using a crisscross pattern. In the same fashion as the inside wheel, mount the outside wheel with the concave side facing outward. Use a tool to lift the wheel onto the studs. Make sure to align the handholds of the rims with each other. The valve stems should be on opposite sides. Reinstall outer lug nuts. Hand tighten evenly. Lower the vehicle and remove jack. With the vehicle on the ground, finish tightening outer lug nuts in a crisscross pattern. Remember to retighten lug nuts to factory specifications within 100 miles. Once you realize you have a flat or low tire, pull safely to the right of the roadway out of traffic. If possible, pull off the road completely and find a flat level ground. Shift the manual transmission into reverse, or if you have an automatic transmission, put it into neutral. Set the parking brake and turn off ignition. On a completely level ground, or if you are unsure of the direction of ground incline, Place a chalk block on each side of the wheel. The chalk block should be placed under the wheel on the opposite side of the vehicle on an axle that does not have the damaged tire. To remove and install a heavy truck tire such as this one, you will need the following tools. Nut cover pliers, tire iron or extension bar, torque multiplier, half inch drive ratchet and the appropriate size socket. Locate and retrieve the hydraulic jack. Remove nut covers with pliers. Next Connect the socket to the head of the torque multiplier. Then connect the ratchet to the other side of the head. The added force of the multiplier handle should be applied to the ground. Use the extension bar and secure it with your foot. Loosen all lug nuts approximately one turn. Place the jack under a flat part of the axle nearest the damaged tire. If necessary, use cribbing to support the jack. Raise the vehicle until the wheel is approximately two inches off the ground. Remove all lug nuts. Make sure to place them all together for easy retrieval. Reach in, 
Grab the inside of the tire and pull toward you. Let the tire slide off the hub onto the ground. Rock the tire using a back and forth pulling movement to walk the tire from underneath the wheel well. Place tire safely on the ground. Visually inspect wheel well area for signs of damage and leaking fluids. Never get under a raised vehicle when the tires are off. Never drive a damaged vehicle. Retrieve the spare tire. Walk the tire to the point where it can be tilted up and flush with the wheel studs. Use a tool to help lift the tire onto the studs. Reinstall lug nuts and hand tighten evenly. Slowly lower the vehicle and remove jack. To finish tightening the lug nuts, you will need the torque wrench to replace the half inch drive ratchet. Remember to preset the torque wrench to match the ratio of the multiplier. Don't forget to apply the force of the multiplier handle to the ground. The torque wrench has reached its preset limit when it makes a loud click. Finish tightening all the lug nuts in a crisscross pattern. I hope you can apply what you have seen in this video to your daily work routine and in situations away from work. Remember this video doesn't replace the written instructions in vehicles, manual or factory decals placed on most vehicles. Let's all be safe out there so we can do our jobs and serve the community. Thanks for watching.